everybody, it's Nancy here, just checking in to see how everybody's doing. Uh, today is actually my first day of furloughing. What is furloughing, I hear you ask? Well, I'm sure nobody's asking what furloughing is because everybody knows what furloughing is because six weeks ago we didn't know what it is and then now it's, it's part of our everyday language. Um, I took the difficult decision late last night when Boris was admitted to intensive care that I just, for the first time in this whole crisis, I felt really, really, truly terrified. And I don't want this vlog to be all about doom and gloom because it's not, but I just want to just sort of explain the thought process behind why I decided to do it. So for weeks now, you know, I've had my I've had my moments. I've you know been quite public about it. You know, some days good, some days bad, quite weepy. Um, but always kind of, I don't know, I'm not in denial. I don't know if anybody else feels like this. Not in denial at all. Just. It just felt unreal, even though I was in the front line on, on the um, checkout till at the supermarket, um, talking to people with masks, watching the news, all that sort of thing. It, it was real. But because I was still working, it didn't feel, I don't know, it was just, I, I can't really articulate, I'm unable to articulate what it is. But anyway, um, but when I heard last night that Boris, who, you know, love him or hate him, he's doing a bloody good job at the moment, steering our country through the worst crisis that the world has ever known. Um, what he's had to deal with in the last, well, in his since his premiership, you know, sort of Brexit and Mexit and, and obviously now this is just extraordinary. And obviously now, unsurprisingly, con you know, considering that he's expo been so exposed to it, um, he succumbed and um, it's hardly surprising and but when I heard he'd been in, uh, admitted to intensive care I really really I mean I I can't I, I felt like this the icicles just going sort of going around the you know my heart that's how I felt I felt really truly terrified and I just thought I don't I don't want to go to work and I, you know and I'd, I'd opted to be deployed I'd said I didn't want to furlough I really wanted to do my bit and 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 you know just yeah do my bit I suppose but then I just thought why am I doing this why am I putting myself unnecessarily in harm's way when I've got an amazing business that I work for who is prepared to follow me uh, with you know and yeah why am I doing this and I've got I've got you know two lovely boys who you know are not dependent on me but they are you know they're my dependents and, and my lovely sister who, who lives with me and I just thought why are you risking this this is crazy um, and it just became very real. And then obviously watched the news last night, which is never a good idea. Um, that was quite alarming. But uh, I rang, you know, I rang my my manager, who was just lovely, and said, "I'm sorry, I just can't do it." And she was, she couldn't have been more um, considerate and caring and understanding if she tried. So, so thank you to Jackie. Um, you've just been amazing. So yeah. So today is first day of furloughing. Um, and yeah, it's 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 okay actually. Um, I've been quite productive. I did get up very late, I'm not going to lie. I couldn't sleep last night, um, but I slept better knowing that I didn't have to get up to go to work. And it, it just, I suppose it gave me more, it gave me more, even more, if it was possible, respect for those who are risking their lives day in, day out. Um, the NHS, you know, those people working in the NHS, those who are working in supermarkets and, you know, police officers and, and all the, the unsung heroes, delivery drivers, postmen, everybody who's basically not able to self-isolate so thank you one and all because oh, this little girl is very very grateful so how's everybody else coping with furloughing and self-isolating just let me know how you're feeling how's it all feel how are you dealing with it do you, does your day have structure or are you just making up as you go along i'm kind of i'm doing the latter i have to say um having less close contact less close con uh, personal contact with my fridge um, pleased to say although having eaten all the chocolate in the house I decided I needed to make a chocolate cake so I've just done that so we'll see how that turns out um, but yeah um, again exercise what are everybody's thoughts on exercise um, how's everybody coping with getting out and about and what pray tell is the etiquette if you're out there you know trying to run and I use the word run I use it very loosely I don't think Usain Bolt's got anything to worry about anytime soon but I've been trying to do couch to 5k and today was my third kind of foray out um you know out there and and and, and I was doing fine um but running you know running along the you know the, the redways and I've got someone walking towards me who's clearly not going to get out the way and surely as a runner you have preference and again I'm, I'm pleased I'm using the word runner in inverted commas um you have preference and as a walker you'd maybe go into the onto the grass with your dog perhaps I don't know correct me if I'm being wrong but 
that's what I, I thought. Anyway, she did get out of the way, so I ran across the grass. And I don't know if those of you who've ever run, but running on grass actually is not a good idea because it's very uneven and the ability to, to twist your ankle is, is you know, is, is, very, is very sort of real. So, um, yeah, I ran across the grass and within about 30 seconds, my, I don't know, the, the back of my thigh, felt, I felt like I pulled a muscle. It was really, really painful um, being un, on such uneven terrain. Um, so yeah, that put paid to that. So I only managed half of that. So that's a real shame. Anyway, I came home, did some yoga and um, you know, hopefully managed to stretch that out. But I still blow, I'm still blown away by the utter twatdom of people out there picnicking. We saw not one, not two, but three people picnicking and sunbathing. I don't know if people are still grasping the enormity of what we're going through and what social distancing actually means. It means you go out for an, a, an hour's constitutional once a day, two meters apart, unless you're living with that person. Why, why are the usual rules not, you know, what, what makes people think that the usual rules don't apply? So I'm getting really on my my high horse but if anybody's watching television and seeing what's going on with our premier who is the you know who's the strongest you know most oh, i don't know I, words fail me and i'm